privacy and security concerns of around two now much debated uh, pieces of draft legislation uh, being considered by the EU legislature, the Digital Markets Act and the Digital Services Act. Um, Digital Services Act, uh, it used to be one idea of an overarching Digital Services Act, now where uh, the, well, the, the European Commission decided to, then, uh, decided to split them into two pieces but and uh, you have some competition related provisions in 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 the DMA well mostly in the DMA but uh, there are also some uh, competition related uh, provisions in the digital services act so I'll take them together and the thing I, I want to say um, at the very beginning is that it's very difficult to legislate or regulate for privacy and security so it's very difficult to achieve an appreciable increase in the privacy and security through legislation. So, and um, and we can have long debates about how much of an improvement, appreciable improvement in privacy, was uh, sort of affected by the uh, by GDPR. How much? Uh, how much was it performative? How much was, was it? Uh, is it compliance theater? Um, these uh, these uh, these questions are they, they don't have obvious answers and and there, there is a lot of debate around it, around this but but uh, but w what I will focus on today is the risk of that w sometimes when uh, there uh, we may have legislation or regula uh, regulatory action which is which has ostensibly nothing to do with. Uh, privacy or security, but may have very serious consequences. So, wh one, uh, my thesis is that it may be very difficult to legislate or regulate for privacy and security, but it's better. N uh, by, uh, but it's a good idea for for the law and the regulators to at least not to do uh, things that would make. Uh, the situation worse in terms of privacy and security, and I think the Digital Markets Act is uh, is uh, is a very significant risk uh, in this respect. So, so here is a short list of um, of so some of the main concerns. Uh, there there may be others. I'm I'm now working on a longer, uh, larger research project on on specifically uh, trying to identify all those to map all, uh, all the po uh, possible security and privacy risks. And uh, so you may have heard about some of them. Uh, for, uh, you may have heard about the side loading concern, for example. Uh, I've heard that. Uh, um, one of Apple's uh, uh, main executives um, made his whole speech at the Web Summit about the concerns of uh, surrounding side loading. He compared, uh, he said that side loading was the uh, sort of malware designers or uh, malware spreaders' uh, best friend. Um, so, so there is. Um, there is a provision for side loading. There are provisions for interoperability, for data portability, and for uh, for access to uh, to databases for, uh, by so-called vetted researchers, and perhaps by um, uh, and also by by government uh, agencies. But so I I don't have time, and I'm not going to try to go into the details of what these will mean exactly. So I'll just uh, say briefly what they, what, they, what they are and then I'll focus on data portability which I think is a good example of the, of the concern. So side loading um, which uh, would be required under Article 61C of the Digital Markets Act would mean that um, the, you, you, you could not have a situation that the uh, iPhone users now now have, or iOS users, that you can't uh, um, unless you're in an enterprise environment, you can't install apps uh, otherwise th than through the official uh, Apple App Store. Um, interoperability uh, is a uh, is a requirement that goes um, that would require. Uh, 
not just Apple, but uh, it's, it's probably the easiest uh, to think about it on the example of, of a social uh, media platform like Facebook. So what, what we now have under the GDPR, and that, uh, you can already do that, um, you can download your, all, your, well, all your data from Facebook, right? You can go to settings, privacy, and download perhaps gigabytes of photos and mess, uh, your message history. You, you can do that. So that's, that's portability. That's one way. Um, interoperability would go beyond that. And, it would, uh, um, and if it's a legal mandate, then it would require uh, Facebook to, um, to establish connections between uh, with other platforms, uh, perhaps uh, uh, perhaps Twitter, allowing users to um, uh, to both uh, take data from Facebook to Twitter and and also to control their Facebook feed and and so on. Use, uh, from the other platform. So this way you could create, there are, there are fascinating things you could create. You could create like a meta um, social media platform or you could have one uh, sort of interface for many, for many so social media platforms. There, so there, uh, and this, this is sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, given as a potential solution to on uh, content moderation uh, issues because we can imagine a situation where uh, Facebook uh, offers one news feed, but then you could have you could uh, you could have a. For example, Breitbart or someone else offering their flavor of, of a Facebook new, uh, news feed, where, or not just Facebook, but Twitter, and from uh, so just taking over the role of uh, um, so curating um, uh, curators of, of the content, right? So you can have different communities uh, which would have different flavors of, of social media, and then they would be in charge of moderation uh, of moderation and deciding what's okay for them as a community. But the problem is that to do it, you would you would really need um, the, this kind of connection that would mean personal data, all the data going uh, two ways continuously. And, and the question is, what sort of concerns uh, are there about, uh, about doing th this sort of thing? So um, can, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, um, yes, perfect. So, so the, the concerns will be similar for uh, interop uh, interoperability and portability. And um, so let's assume a model of portability uh, some close to what, uh, how it works now, which is that you have to go to Facebook, click, download. Uh, so, so the DMA would require this to be real time and continuous. So uh, it, could, it would not be satisfied by a download, but it would need to be some kind of an API um, interf uh, interface. Uh, but but the big question, well, today it's 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 less of an issue. But uh, but when you think about um, uh, the situation uh, that gave rise to the Cambridge Analytica scandal and those uh, quizzes the, that pe people used to do on Facebook uh, uh, quite quite a few years ago now, right? So uh, they you could say that those people gave their consent for their data to be shared. There was probably something in uh, small print that, uh, that the data will, will be, uh, can be used with the, by the makers of the app, of the quiz. But, but, uh, but it, was not that, it was not that difficult to convince the users to just click yes. And we, we heard that uh, before today. Users, uh, we were so used to just uh, getting uh, playing whack-a-mole with uh, consent banners and so on people j just click just click yes so so when you w um, when the only safeguard is for the user to click yes and f and potentially this would mean that all their messenger history is shared uh, instant uh, instantaneously that's that's a pretty significant consequence uh, if that's the only um, if that's the only safeguard, right? Just, just them clicking yes. Um, so, um, so, the, so the question arises: If you have, if you have that kind of interface, how do you, uh, how do you make sure that the user um, uh, would not be surprised by the consequences of what's happening, that they were not tricked into agree, uh, agreeing and so on? Um, and, and this was also uh, discussed uh, earlier today as well that. 
your data on, on a platform like Facebook is really, I mean, what's interesting is really not just what you, what you add, but the your interactions with other people. So uh, tags and likes and comments and and uh, and if, if it's a history of your messages, well, it's, it's somewhat pointless if you don't have the messages from 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 other people in, in that uh, conversation, right? So uh, so then the question is, uh, and this is really an unsolved question, even by, by, by people who thought about this m most thoroughly. Um, some, uh, what about the rights interests of, of people who, who are not the uh, user who's authorizing this situation? Because they might also be uh, quite mortified if they learn that, oh, uh, like with Cambridge Analytica, you clicked and uh, suddenly their data is, uh, is, is somewhere where they wouldn't have expected it. So, so that's, uh, that's a potential concern. Um, and then you have you have questions about those um, uh, third-party developers, those other platforms than the platform from which the data is uh, um, originating. When some of them, of course, so, so you could have the Twitters, the TikToks, the serious players of the world um, making some use of it, although it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different question how much uh, use would they really uh, make. Uh, but but uh, if you create a legal mandate where Facebook cannot discriminate, cannot choose, and when the rule says any third party that requests has to be provided uh, then then it's not really no longer about twitter it's not it's about two guys in a basement somewhere perhaps in china because the because it's not uh, at least in the rules now have nothing about uh, uh, so, so the limited geographic scope of inter nothing like that so you could have like a chinese company you could have um, bad uh, bad actors you could have all sorts of uh, situations which are now um, uh, now, uh, at least Facebook, Twitter, they are limiting the access through APIs to, to their data and they are trying to, to, to police this. So uh, some people say, well, this, is, this has anti-competitive effects because, uh, because you cannot build applications on top of their APIs. Twitter used to be more open, then they, they closed it, then now they are starting to be more open, but, but they are definitely trying to, uh, to play this, uh, the role of uh, uh, to police the, the flow of data also just to make uh, make sure that uh, those bad actors don't uh, don't get it and even with again even with uh, good actors like uh, so you, you can think of those two guys in the basement or in the garage they might they uh, they might be uh, they might be perfectly um, sort of ethical and and care about user consent and and not uh, not, not wanting to use to, to use it for any nefarious purposes or sell it to third parties and anything like that without consent. But but the question is, uh, there may be a huge disproportion in the uh, kinds of resources they could use to secure the data they now end up having access to versus uh, the cybersecurity operations at, for example, Facebook and Google. Like the level of security provided by Google in terms of both securing the, their data centers, their um, and just access uh, to, uh, to to the data uh, uh, by, by their own employees. This is this is sort of uh, uh, like intelligence agency, uh, like GCHQ level, perhaps on par or in some uh, uh, situations maybe even higher. So this is. Um, that's why we probably don't think about those risks of uh, Google being hacked so much or our Facebook conversations being hacked as much. But if, th if suddenly this becomes just one click away, uh, all, all, the, all this could be shared and, uh, and if it's a possi uh, possibility that uh, your sort of consent could be, you could be tricked uh, to, uh, to give consent, then, then the question of um, be there good actors or bad actors, can they actually uh, secure your data to the uh, standard we're used to with the big players today? That's, a very, that's very much an open question, right? Uh, so, um, so, so the, those questions for, uh, from, the, from the previous slide, I think they point, uh, they show that even um, taking, taking into account that there may be great things we could achieve with increased interoperability, there is, uh, 
there, there is a very significant risk to in mandating it uh, by, a, by a simple rule, uh, which, by the way, it looks like it, uh, there is, uh, in one of the versions of the new, uh, of the Digital Services Act, it's actually, it's, it's, it's almost frightening. It just says that uh, um, uh, very large online platforms have, pr uh, have to provide uh, interoperability of core services and the European Commission will uh, later think of the guidelines uh, how to do it. But, but if the rule is just you have to share data and, for example, the Commission will think mostly about competition concerns, so, so they will just focus on, well, the, the, the big players cannot discriminate, they cannot impose uh, technical, uh, onerous technical requirements and so on, then by, by those, you may think, pro-competitive uh, restrictions, you uh, you also make it almost impossible for the uh, for the originating sort of, uh, platform to protect their users, and and this is this can be a very uh, a very serious tension here. So so you could um, s some people uh, there is a paper by uh, two of the um, most vocal proponents of, of strong interoperability. They say GDPR solved this. But, but I th uh, they are not lawyers and, and, it, and it tells because uh, it seems that they have this magical thinking that just having a law on the books means that the problem no longer exists, right? But GDPR is, is not, will not solve the problem of uh, you know, um, two guys in the basement uh, somewhere who are bad actors or a Chinese company, so judgment-proof um, you know, actors who, uh, who don't care about uh, compliance. So if you're, f if, you're legal, if you're legally mandated to give data to anyone, then, uh, then yes, then GDPR is not, uh, really not, uh, not going to, do, uh, to have much effect here. Um, so it may in theory, but again, it, does, it wouldn't even apply if the actors are uh, um, th well, it, it couldn't be uh, really enforced about uh, against actors who are not uh, within the uh, jurisdiction and are in China, Russia, and, and, and so on. So, so that's one. Uh, that's one big question. And the other big question is, uh, uh, w which I uh, which I pose here is doing things this way. So with um, interoperability, uh, with a strong interoperability, with the user access to uh, sort of uh, giving users uh, well, well, uh, capacity to tinker with the um, uh, with the nuts and bolts of of, of their of their software and their devices. There is a, there, it seems to me that there is a certain vision of technology behind it, and it's uh, and it's a vision that appeals to. Uh, um, uh, many NGOs who are promoting this, they, it, 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 it seems to me that they see all, uh, all software like Linux, they see all social media like Mastodon, which is a very niche um, plat uh, platform, which is used by Trump's new uh, social media platform, by, uh, uh, by the way, because it's software more than a platform, or Usenet, um, sort of all the sort of very old social media, uh, mo mostly email-based, um, or communication like email, and email is um, is very much the opposite of uh, privacy by design. It's it's a bit better than it was 20 years ago, where uh, when when it was designed, it was like sending a postcard uh, with uh, plain text, right? So everyone could read, <laughs> every server uh, could read the, what was the content of your message. So if that's how you see interoperability, then that's. Uh, that is, that is one way, yes, it's a model. It's a model that may work for power users, for geeks, for, uh, for software engineers, people who really like to spend time tweaking their, all, all the settings and, yes, and, uh, and uh, choosing um, well, different uh, li Linux distributions that, that, that work best for them and so on. But, but the question is, is that uh, is that the internet, is that the kind of digital services that we have today? Um, and, uh, and are those actually 
the users we should be thinking of when uh, regulating. So, so, so I, I, would, I would like to suggest to you that most users are rationally disinterested in uh, gaining such high levels of the te technological uh, acumen that would be required for them to, be, to protect themselves against the risks of, uh, um, of, uh, of a legal, legally, uh, of legally mandated uh, interoperability. So if you, if you put so much burden uh, on, on users, it's, you could think of it a, a bit like, uh, like driving. Many people are rationally not interested in, in becoming drivers, but, uh, uh, and that's fine if you have other options, right? Public transportation and, and, and so on. But if you take away all other options and if you force, pe force people to drive even though they, they're not in interested in or maybe just uh, not good at it, they, this, is, this is not going to be safe for them. So, uh, so this raises a question about, um, about um, competition, not just within platforms, but competition uh, between platforms, right? Uh, the choice, um, um, we now have a choice to use Apple's curated or walled garden, but, uh, but this, uh, uh, th this kind of regulatory model would take away that choice. And it's, uh, yes, so it may be difficult, uh, difficult to model um, in, in competition terms, but I, I think it's quite clear that th there is, there would be something missing also just in, ter uh, in terms of consumer choice. And that's uh, all I had to say. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mikolai? Yeah. Sam? Um, thanks very much for the talk. Very interesting. Um, <coughs> What do you think of the approach uh, that open banking has taken yeah. of creating a whitelist so that um, you're not potentially giving, basically you can't, as far as I understand it, yeah. give access to any company. You can only give it to specifically approved and, in open banking's case, regulated companies. So in terms of s s security and privacy, I think it could work. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but it's a very telling example because open banking is is a highly regulated framework. Um, so it's, it's quite far from this idea of interoperability where, j yes, again, any two guys were in a garage would, would be able to, you know, to st uh, crea create a new startup uh, just f uh, using, using Facebook graph data. So I think, and, it's, uh, and of, of course, and when, you, when you follow the open banking model, well, those two guys then will need a compliance department and a law firm, and so yes, so, so then uh, it becomes uh, uh, not feasible. So, um, um, so yes, I, I think it's a, it's a trade-off that, that, uh, that should be in the minds of the regulators, but, uh, but I don't think it is. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. It's, I want to ask about your last question, why take yes. away consumer choice? Yes. I don't really have a choice about what voltage of electricity we use or which yes. side of the road we drive on. So it's yes. more a question about what level of the technology stack you want to mandate those kinds of standards to enable the interoperability that allows new entrants rather than puts the onus on consumers to make these choices. So. Uh, so, so again, I, I don't have a problem with interoperability in principle if it can be done like through, like in open banking, right? If it's uh, if it can be uh, done in a safe way, then uh, then um, then I'm all for it. The problem is that those regulations sort of wish away all the uh, all all the risks, uh, and 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 that's uh, and that's the problem. So. Um, so the way th holding other things constant, I think this would be this would be uh, this would be uh, a net uh, loss for consumers not to be able to use uh, to have this simple choice. I've heard that Apple devices are safer, and that's all I need to know. But whereas uh, if if, the, if, inter if side loading is forced, if interoperability is forced, then you need to uh, suddenly you need to know much more about technology to uh, to to stay safe, and that's and I, and and I think that's a problem. But if we move to a slightly different regulatory environment where where interoperability becomes safe, because for example, of w white listing, so it's not like like a, a blanket ban on uh, discrimination, but uh, but interoperability is only allowed with white listed uh, um, third parties. Then, uh, then, uh, then it's a very different conversation. But that's not a conversation we're having with the DMA, which is much more crude. Um. Any more questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, is there a risk 
here not uh, is there a risk here with the mandated portability and interoperability yeah. requirements that it might actually disincentivize the the tech platforms from innovating and investing if you sort of know that others will sort of be able to piggyback on your investments and innovation so the, it, it, it is it is a possible concern, but but on the, uh, at the same time, I, I think what Ben Evans uh, uh, said today is also very true that most of the data that Facebook has has no value for others. So so actually, this exercise to a large extent can be uh, maybe just pointless. It may be sort of a decrease of security at not much gain because actually no one uh, no one else may care for those things like what what your loading times are. So so there is there may be a very small uh, part of, of the data they have. That, that has any any value, and uh, uh, and I, I think uh, Thibault had a very uh, very good post about this. That most m most new entrants, like TikTok, they um, the the successful entrants, they, they uh, it's not a, their model was not just uh, um, even copying what's already happening or to somehow scraping data or anything like that. They, they are offer offering something genuinely, uh, genuinely new. And um, so, of course, you could say, well, but, that's on, uh, but that's pro that may be just because they, they, they don't have access to, to the data. But, but again, I think, so, um, so I, I would probably go, uh, then go back to, 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 to this Ben Evans point, which is, I'm skeptical that this data has that much value to uh, to, to other places, and unless we're talking about this middleware interoperability, as in like uh, new interfaces for uh, for the platforms we already have. But then the question is, who will finance that? What will be the business model here for the Breitbart flavored Facebook, for the uh, you know a different kind of Facebook? So, so there are many questions that, that are unanswered here. It's not so o it's not that obvious that uh, that it will work. So it could be that you're buying. So you're paying in terms of privacy and security, but it's not clear what, what the upside is going to be. Yeah. No. Any, any more questions for Mikolai? Great. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.